right, so you just put the pumpkin in. Okay. Yes. Pumpkin's in. <laughs> She's mighty large. I just came in and it smelled so good. <gasps> Not quite. How oh, can you tell when it's ready? Uh, just a little bit softer. It's almost there. But it's it's her big brown pumpkin. She's beautiful. Matt went out, did some grocery shopping, came back with two pie dishes. He's making pumpkin pie. We were laughing, guys, because Matt's, Matt put the pumpkin in the oven and it was no small pumpkin. It literally looks like a giant turkey, but it's not gonna taste like turkey. It's gonna taste like pumpkin, and I love pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin soup. Have you ever had it before? Do you guys make it with the pumpkins that you find around your space every year? Matt collects the pumpkins that we put out for decoration, and he turns them into something or another. So the house inside smells like pumpkin cooking oh like warm pumpkin pie I can't wait to see how he seasons it and I am out here in my studio garage it's actually a beautiful day I just put the garage door up and I'm gonna finish a piece behind me that you guys have been waiting to see me finish I'm gonna show you guys today how I use pretty papers and pretty paint colors to really make a piece feel custom, feel unique. If you love that tattered, shabby, antique, time-worn, oh, scrumptious, yummy, just, yeah, all those things, then you will love this furniture tutorial. In the last two weeks or so, you guys saw this part of the furniture flip happen over on Home Talk. We were honored to be guest host over there, and it was just a 30-minute tutorial, so this is how far we got. In this vlog today, I'm gonna to play some parts of that video that I filmed, me and Matt together, so that way I can bring you up to speed at least to the point where what you see right now. That video went viral, I kid you not, over on the Home Talk platform. The last time I checked within like two to three days, over a half a million people had already watched it. Kitty Kitty, you ready for the tutorial too? Look, Stanley came to join us. Come here, Kitty Kitty. Puss, 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 come here. Come here, say hello. Say hello to all of our friends. So we're gonna get it done. So let's start you off with how I started and what it looked like in the beginning. So this here is old sewing machines, um, weather balloons, crowns. You know what I also love finding is like papers that might have like, for example, um, queen bees and things like that. So yes, I am a paper lover. Huh, Stanley, I am a paper lover. Love me papers and pens and stationaries and all those things. Oh, Stanley, your fur coat is coming in nice. Look at your winter fur coat. Oh my gosh. Oh, the fuzzy love today on the vlog. So yeah, there's all kinds of papers and I love to collect them when I'm out and about. I look for stuff on sale because you can intermingle all the pretty papers that you find along your way. So Mod Podge is a glue and a sealer all in one. I love using it because it's just very easy. Um, you can pick it up pretty much at any craft store. Now one thing that I'm gonna definitely encourage you to do is put it down thoroughly a lot. If you um, are somebody who deals with a lot of bubbles when you tend to use papers, sometimes, believe it or not, it might mean that you're not putting enough of the glue down below it. So you have these air pockets, okay? So my favorite kind of Stanley Cat, come here, keep me warm. My favorite kind of Mod Podge, the favorite sheen that I like to use is matte, M-A-T-T-E, because I tend to love to produce pieces that look very time-worn and old and vintage and shabby and have that charming feel. So therefore, I don't do glossy. Um, because, like I always say, why are you distressing and making things seem tattered and old if you're going to put a new gloss high shine finish onto it? It just, it just doesn't go together. For, so for me, I like to keep that feel, so I do use a matte, M-A-T-T-E, just like I'm married to a matte, who makes amazing pumpkin pie, sheen.
Now you gotta be patient. When you're first putting this stuff down, number one, you gotta understand that this is a very imperfectly perfect look for the top of furniture, okay? So you're going to have wrinkles, you're going to have bubbles. Yes, I'm just gonna tell you that right out right now. So if you can't deal with that, this is probably not the tutorial for you. There are things that you can do to help make sure that you don't have bubbles. Things like you can smooth your paper from the middle out to the ends to help push the air that might be underneath the paper out. You can make sure that you have a lot of product Mod Podge underneath that paper so that way everything gets pulled in and sucked into that wood and there's not any pieces that get left without any of the Mod Podge on it that gets left and just kind of doesn't pull in like the rest of it, AKA bubbles happen. You can use some nice smooth out tools like use old cards that you might might have I actually like to use even a window window cleaner I get them at the dollar store the squeegees that you can get for a buck just to kind of like smooth out paper on the top for me though I go with the wrinkles I try to have as less as possible but with this particular look I like my wrinkles I just think it looks much more authentic again I'm just not somebody who loves to paint things to look perfect. So I give you permission to have wrinkles and love on them. You can even distress them later once it's dry if you really want to do that and make that part of your charming piece. Now, another technique is having little needles. Yes, like sewing needles around you. So what can happen is if you have the trapped bubble, you can kind of just puncture it just a little bit with the sewing needle, let the air escape, and that way help it kind of like really absorb and sit back down flat. That could be another technique that you could use. And if you really want to get serious about eliminating as many wrinkles as possible what you could do as well is use the dry iron method or technique and this is where after you've applied your Mod Podge as normal just like this you let it dry just like this as normal meaning that right now what I would do is I would take a piece of parchment paper get some parchment paper from your dollar store or something like that spread out over the top of it turn your iron on on just like a low setting and basically iron on top of that parchment paper what it does is it will reactivate the Mod Podge that is below all those papers everything gets moist again everything gets warm again and with your ironing out you're literally ironing down the paper to sit as flat as possible and let me tell you you can get some super flat flush looks by doing that technique so you can break that out if you want to do that as well so just know that you can also take your paint and once your Mod Podge dries you can start to add in some really cool um, stencils on top of it to really make that piece your own okay so let's go ahead and find maybe a spot just to give you an idea. So let's just do this real fast. Now in, in a perfect world, I would have dried this, allowed this to dry, but I really want you guys to get some ideas for how you can really play with this and build up layers. Ooh, ain't she pretty? Ain't she pretty? Know that wood is a sponge. Everything dries and then cures and continues to suck in and really seal strong. So for me, after I do this technique, I like to let it sit for at least 24 hours and then come back and look at it in the morning with fresh eyes because what you saw in that tutorial over the 30 minutes of us working on it, it looks again different today because time has passed. Looks absolutely beautiful today. All that Mod Podge just came crystal clear. I love it. And I think we can build upon the layers just a little bit more to finish off this piece. We've also got to paint it down here as well. So you saw me do some stenciling. We added the B and I was showing you how to even just make use of parts of stencils that you find along the way. And so I used another flower stencil right here. I kind of let it fall off the edge. I love that look. You don't have to use a full part of it. And this is a stencil. If you guys follow me on Facebook, I think we went shopping together and we found this one together at, where was it? I think it was Hobby Lobby, right guys? We found this one together. So I was even thinking about maybe doing a few more layers on top of this. I love that broken layered look. So let's add in a few more flowers, I think, to the top of this piece. The other thing I wanted to let you know is that when it comes to doilies, I put a big one on here, but I tell you what's also really super cute and very, very sweet is when you use the smaller doilies just like this. And they come in different colors. Sometimes I find them on Amazon, 
down. Sometimes I find them out when I'm out and about, um, even like at Hobby Lobbies and places like that. But look, there's some green ones there. Love that. And there's white. And actually, if you look at my stash, somewhere along the way, I have peach ones and pink ones. There's all kinds. And I love to keep all the remnants. That's the bigger kind right there. But I do, I love to keep all the little remnants of even like the pieces because at the end of the day, you know what? I might wanna add a little piece in like right there somewhere. They're perfect for mixed media pieces. Huh, Stanley? Perfect. All right, you getting excited, bud? We're gonna do this. Stanley, the tutorial's over here, not over there. Stanley, that is not a window. What are you doing? Where are you trying to get? You're gonna try to get to this window up here. Stanley Cat. Well, I guess Stanley wanted a front row seat today to our mixed media project. So the color I'm reaching for again today is my black velvet. I'm gonna finish up the legs on this piece, but I'm also gonna use it for stenciling. And our Junk Monkey paint is awesome for stenciling because guys, we go thick in our paint, right? Remember, this paint was made for me as a shabby painter. Now I share it with the rest of the world. But honestly, I'm stencil Sonia. I love to stencil and therefore, this is an amazing paint to stencil with. This is an example of when you find a stencil and there's something, some part of it that just brings you extra joy. So right here, there is just a beautiful rose. And in playing with the stencil, now I've really zoned in on it. So you can better believe that I'll probably make use of this rose in a lot more places than even just on this stool because I'm in love with that rose right there. brush when you're doing this. All right guys, so we've done tons of stenciling on the top right now. We're gonna let that part dry. This is where I take my shabby style chip brush and I love to do a, what I call the edging effect, right? Everything looks better in a photo. So I'm gonna bring my edging in a little bit further and this is how I do it. Shabby style all the way. And round your corners out a little bit. You really smooth them out. My tabletop is drying right now, so I'm gonna work on the legs and finish up the part that I did not get done. And no, I don't have to prime or sand or strip this piece. If I'm using Junk Monkey Chalky Style paint, it's as easy as grabbing a brush and going bananas and having fun with it. Which is the best part, right? Let's leave out all that boring stuff. All right, so we have put the black on the legs, finished it off, loving it at this point. Now it's just gonna dry. We're gonna walk away and let it dry, much like the top is drying as well. And then we'll come back and I will show you how I'm gonna seal it. I love how I put some extra C across the top because we're a little extra around these parts. Oh, I love that messy cluttered. Oh, just all those textures and paper and paint all coming together, doilies, you name it and anything else that you wanna put on here. So you can like incorporate postcards and pictures and whatever floats your boat and ticket stubs and think about all the things that you can do. Even if you find a bench that you wanna kinda of dedicate to something or even to someone, um, you could do baby benches and I'm just thinking graduation benches. What's really neat is this bench is a piano bench so it actually lifts up and it provides storage underneath. All right, let's be patient, let this dry and then we can come back and we can finish it off. All right guys, when I say we're gonna be patient and let that dry, I kid you not, I come back into the house and I'm staring at what looks like a giant fuzzy peach mat. What have you done? What have you done at this point? They didn't give that pumpkin didn't give me the information that I wanted. So oh. I skinned him. Holy moly, have you ever seen a skinned pumpkin? <laughs> I mean, and it, she's a chunky monkey. I mean, look at her. She's got junk in the trunk. Holy moly, this just keeps getting better and better. Every time I walk back in the kitchen, it smells better. And now we are closer to what? Pumpkin pie, right, is what you're making? Pie, yeah. Pie, pie, pie. If you're just following us over on Facebook, you saw that Matt cut this thing in half. 
live and literally split it in half, flop that part over. We're talking about what we can do with the seeds. So if you guys have any simple things that I can do with these seeds, he's gonna keep them for me. I'm gonna throw them in the oven and I'm thinking I'm, I'm gonna season them with something or another because I know you can eat pumpkin seeds. I've just never done it before. So I'm gonna try it this year and make use of the seeds in this pumpkin. So stay tuned. We're gonna head back into the garage and work on our furniture and we'll check back in on Matt because Matt needs checking on. <laughs> All right, so she is almost dry at this point. You can still see a few little wet marks right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and distress the base. I'm gonna grab a heavy grit sand pad and start distressing. Sometimes I like to do a wet distress, especially if I'm going for a shabby style. Totally up to you if you wanna distress, but for me, I do love adding in distressed marks. So what happens is if my paint is a little bit wet and I rub my sand pad over it, it just gives me some really cool distress marks, that's all. So you can totally wait till your paint is dry. You can do it when it's like 95, 98% dry, that call is yours, but I am going to distress. So right here, there's a little piece of paper right here. Gone, now she's just distressed. This is one of the reasons why I don't get carried away when I'm doing this kind of look. There was a few ripples right here and when I distressed it, I kid you not, like do you see those beautiful ripples that just showed itself? All these little places where the paper is raised over top of each other. That's totally okay with your work because you know what, this is your creation and there are no rules. So for me, I am loving on this look. It's time for us to seal this beauty, seal the legs, seal the top. And how will I do that, Sonia? Oh, and let's not forget to do a dust off before we get to the seal part, because all that sanding can produce a lot of sand dust. All right, let's talk sealer, guys, with my head in the frame. All right, that's better. All right. I think we're good. Let's talk sealer. I wonder what happened to Stanley Cat. He's around here somewhere. All right, so how do I protect my furniture with banana peel? Think about, I always say, a banana has a peel, a protective outer coating, a carrying case. Banana peel does this for your furniture. It dries clear, you brush it on, you roll it on, you spray it on, you do whatever floats your boat and how you put it on. Protects your piece, it makes it wipeable. And if you have pieces that are gonna be touched a lot, used a lot, then you're definitely gonna want a really durable seal put on it. It dries to a sheen that is really between a matte and a satin, which is going to only add to the vintage charm of this piece. Mod Podge and Banana Peel plays very nice together. So the Mod Podge is really like a craft glue, right? It's not gonna be something that's super durable for a lot of use. This is why you, you wanna go with a furniture paint product when you're putting papers onto your furniture. So now we go ahead, we brush it on. We let it dry, and what's gonna happen is all those papers are gonna be sealed down so nice with this product. And I like to do two light coats of my banana peel. All right, let's let that top dry, work on the legs, then we'll go back to the top, do the legs, and we'll be done. And here she is, all done and dry and looking marvelous. Love, love, love how this turned out, guys. Hopefully it gives you lots of inspiration and know that you can try it too. You cannot mess it up. This is one of those techniques that honestly, you can't mess up. You just can't mess up. Well, that was easy. That piece back there is done, and now she's ready to just find a new place, a new home, wherever I want to put her. So stay tuned. You might see her show up somewhere in the background in one of my daily vlogs. Thanks, guys, for subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. It lets me know that you love these style videos, and if I see lots of thumbs up, yeah, I'll make more of them for you guys. Leave me a comment below. Are you going to try this technique? Do you feel inspired by this technique? Do you have lots of papers that you You've been wanting to do something with you got a stash of them maybe this could be a fun project 
just for those. As for Matt's pies, he's still working hard in the kitchen right now, so on tomorrow's vlog, I'm sure you will see a glimpse of Matt's finished pumpkin pies. Pies with an S. Lots of pie. See you tomorrow. Bye.